Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I will be talking about these paints which I bought secondhand from a friend. And they are professional paints, but my friend said that she doesn't use them anymore and it's been sitting there for over a year. And I'm not sure if these paints are still okay to be used. I mean, if it's been sitting there for a long time, a few years, probably um, a few of them will be problematic. Maybe the paints have separated, but we shall see. So since watercolor lasts longer in pans, I will be squeezing all of them out and filling these full pans. And uh, I hope that they can last even longer once they have dried. I will be using this safety pin to stir the paints and to get them to spread more evenly in the pans. So these paints that I got are professional paints called White Knights, which I haven't tried before but I've heard people recommending them. So and these paints, they don't look like they have been used much and they come in 10ml tubes. So since these are not new paints, I hope they work well. And currently this color lemon um, is really nice. It look, it's looking really good and uh, it's creamy, it's thick. None of the paint has separated or dried. And this is a very beautiful pan of watercolor right here. So the second tube is cadmium lemon and unfortunately it seems like it has separated. I think it's the pigments and the binder. Yeah, so it looks like the pigments and the binder have separated. Uh, I don't know if it's the honey that they put in or, or anything but currently this looks really bad. Um, and it's very, very watery. I'm not sure if it's supposed to be watery. Um, but yeah, it's looking really um, unusable at this point. And I'm trying to mix it by massaging that same tube. And it still comes out very watery. And um, using the safety pin to mix it produces a a sort of respectable looking paint but it's very watery and I think I probably won't be using this paint. So this third tube of paint is the cadmium yellow medium and it's not as bad as the one before but it is kind of separated as well and very watery as well and I think I won't be using this one either. So at this point, I was already feeling quite disappointed and tired as well. So like, I was thinking, are all the paints spoiled? Am I wasting my time? And I was feeling quite stressed because I had other things to do as well. So I decided to just take a break and come back and do this another day. Hopefully when I had more time and energy. So sometimes um, with art, I do take breaks in between when I feel too stressed and I do come back with better energy and I uh, enjoy it much more. So I think it's a good thing to take breaks. So after that experience, I massaged all the tubes before I opened them. And one thing to be careful of is that you must have the pen very close by to catch the paint if it squirts out. And that's what happened to me right there. And I'm making a huge, huge mess and getting paint all over. And I did underestimate how much work it is to fill these full pens and it does take a lot of time. So if you don't want to do this, you can always buy ready-made watercolor pens. So the way that I like to fill these pens is I fill it halfway first and then I use a pin to push the paint into the corners and then I fill the second half 
and after that I stir the paint to get it more even and this will help to um, get it into all the corners and to remove most of the air bubbles. Only one of the tubes had hardened paint on the top, so I poked it with a pin and that released the paint inside. Out of the 12 tubes on the top row, three of them had separated paint, so hopefully the second row fares better and we will start with this cerulean blue, which is a sky color. And it's looking very, very, very nice. I love this color and it's really thick and it looks like it's really pigmented. Here we have ultramarine, which is more liquid and is not as thick as the others. So it was really easy to fill the whole pan without even using a pin. But there was no separation of paint and it actually looks really, really beautiful as well. So thankfully, most of the paints in the second row were really good and I managed to fill all the 24 pans. So if you ask me if I would buy secondhand paints again, I would have to say maybe because um, I think in the future I wouldn't buy a whole set again. I would probably just buy a few colors. You know, that's if it's possible to just buy a few paints. So I had to get the whole set because, you know, it's sold in a set. But in, you know, whether you get good or bad paints really depends on your luck. But since these secondhand paints are cheaper and they are of professional grade, I think it's worth it. It's worth a shot to get some um, good quality secondhand paints. Especially since leaving those paints unused is kind of a waste anyway. I mean, paints should be used. Now, I know a lot of people um, tend to buy art supplies, just like me. I, I tend to keep them in the cupboard and never use them. And I think that's a bad practice. We should be using them more because that's what they are for. If you keep them in the box and leave them in the cupboard um, what's what's the point in that right because I couldn't wait to test out the watercolors I decided to have some fun and do a little loose sketch after the pans were done I actually intended to do like a video about just secondhand paints and doing these watercolor filling these watercolor pans but I'm going to do a sketch because these paints are just crying out to be used so I'm going to sketch the Monocle Cafe in London and I searched the location in Instagram and these are the photos that you can find easily and as you can see it's a very beautiful beautiful cafe and uh, actually Monocle has very interesting and beautiful magazines about art, business, entrepreneurship and culture and I think they have this really great aesthetic and to me this cafe somehow exudes that aesthetic so I'm going to try to convey that in the sketch so first I'm mixing a few colors for the base layer and I'm going to test them out on scrap paper first
For this piece, I'm wetting the paper in the center first so that we can do a wet on wet technique. And I'm using 100% cotton cold pressed paper. Uh, and the brand is Arches, and it's one of my favorite papers. And now I'm painting the base layer first. And that first stroke of red was pretty intense and pretty saturated, so I used more water instead of paint after that. So I'm trying to follow the reference and getting all the basic shapes and colors that I see in the right places. And at the same time, I'm also thinking about color balance. Um, there's a lot of red on the top, so I also want some red on the bottoms to balance out the painting. And there's a lot of blue on the bottom, so I want a little bit of blue on the top so that it's not uh, too unbalanced. And also I'm adding some greens on the areas that need that have plants and I'm adding some leaves outside the border of the painting so that the borders won't be too straight. And I will also add some bricks on the top later so that it breaks up the border. Yeah, right there. So that I uh, kind of break up that border and make it look a little bit more interesting. And you can see here I'm also lifting some paint because I think some of the areas needed to be lighter. And if you paint it too dark in the first layer, you will end up with not enough highlights. So with watercolor, you do need to plan a little for the brighter areas because you want some of the white of the paper to show true. So now I'm dividing the top and bottom with the bottom half being bigger and about two thirds of the total height. So you don't want to divide the whole piece into um, perfect halves because uh, it doesn't look as nice and attractive. Um, that's what they call the rule of thirds. So generally I try to when when there is a piece like this I try to divide it into unequal halves so I actually started out with digital painting on Photoshop and a Wacom tablet and you know I wasn't really good at it but I learned the basics of painting in Photoshop and in digital I see like some people they start with a crazy almost random mess for their first layer but they always end up with a really beautiful piece and I don't know if that's related but and I'm not saying that you should paint messy or you should paint clean and neat it's just that there are no rules with painting just do what works best for you you can always start with um, the outlines and then paint it in. That's what I do a lot too. And I also like doing this the other way around and that's fine. So I think um, one of the best quotes that I really love is find what feels good. And yeah, that's a shout out to Yoga with Adrian. I love Adrian. She's like my best friend on YouTube, although we've never met, yeah, so find what feels good. So I felt that the words for this building needed to be very clean and neat and to make sure I get my words evenly spaced and in the same size, I used a pencil to outline them first and then slowly used my pen to 
draw them in. I wasn't writing; I was drawing the words, if that makes sense. So, and I think that was a good decision because it came out pretty good. So, one obvious mistake was I made two very different sized windows on the top there, and there's no undo button with traditional art, right? So, but maybe I could adjust that in Photoshop later. Anyway, mistakes or not, I normally never give up on a painting halfway and redo it. I might take a break in between and、um, come back later. But I will always finish it. As you can see, I'm now painting the second layer of watercolor, and、um, I'm just adding color and gradually building up shadows. So, because these paints are new to me, I don't even remember what colors I used. But generally, I used only one red,、um, one green, and two blues. And I supplement that with the browns as well. I used quite a lot of the browns. So you really don't need twenty-four colors, twenty-four paint tubes to paint something. Even Three to four colors is enough to produce something beautiful. And in fact, I'm thinking of using、uh, these, you know, limited color palettes to do a more simple tutorial in the future. And I know some of you did request easier tutorials with simpler subjects.、Um, if I'm doing something like this, like a more complicated subject with.、Um, A lot more、uh, details and color.、Um, I think doing a step by step for that would take at least would become at least an hour long video, which I'm not sure many people would like to watch. So I decided that、um, for these kind of paintings, I would do、um, sort of like a a compact version of it. And you could see the most, the most important parts, and then I could give you some tips and tricks, and that will probably be best for most people. But I will be doing more in-depth tutorials of simpler subjects in the future. So at this point in the painting, I'm thinking that it needs more highlights. So I'm lifting some paint to create these reflections in the windows and also on the trees. So this is quite easy to do with these paints and paper. So next, I'm adding contrast. I'm adding these darker bits so that there's more contrast to the piece. I'm quite happy with how this one turned out. It looks. A little bit like something out of a storybook, but I think it needs more highlights, and so I'm using some white gouache. And in digital painting, highlights are like the cherry on top; it just makes your painting pop. It comes alive, and that's not possible with watercolor, but it is possible with gouache. So I'm just going to dot in a little bit of these, like. White reflections, and it just makes the painting kind of pop a little bit more. All right, so it's done. I really enjoyed painting with these new secondhand paints, and I do like how intense they are. And I really can't wait to paint more. So, do remember to like, comment, and subscribe for more videos. I hope this was helpful to you, and、um, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.